Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Uh, the three of us are Friday Night Flies, so we're a local BC nonprofit web show. We do live tutorials on uh, Friday nights, hence Friday Night Flies. Uh, I think we've got well over 300 videos on there for you guys to download, and, or you don't even have to download, but just go and check out. And We're all about creativity, and uh, we're starting to get into the classics lately, eh, Zach, this year? Yeah, a little bit. But um, we are just guys that enjoy tying, enjoy putting it forward to you guys. Uh, myself and Brad are, are guides with Premden Fish Finder, so everything that we tie is... Uh, we like to have fun. We like to have fun, yeah. We don't take everything that we seriously. tie are patterns that we are currently using, so if you're looking on you the website that? and you want to see what we're using a particular month, if you go back, like we started 2013, I think, is when we started broadcasting. It's been awesome. So if you go back and go into October, you're going to see all the patterns that we're tying for that time period. Typically. Typically for um, what's running that time of year too. Yeah. So in October it's probably chum salmon flies, that kind of stuff. So chum yeah. coho. <laughs> so um, right now we're doing a lot of steelhead flies because that's what's coming up on our heels here. Steelhead and um, and cutties as well. So the pattern that I have here is a cutthroat pattern for up in the Pemberton area. It'll work pretty much anywhere you find the sea runs. Uh, nice little pattern and uh, we'll, uh, I guess we'll just start tying. Yes, if you guys do have questions on particular whoo, on particular methods of fly tying or um, different approaches, uh, feel free to yap them out or shout them out while we're going along here. Brad can do the question and answers. That's weird. I was getting feedback. Yeah. No problem. I'm here for you guys tonight. All right. So we don't have a name for this fly yet, but it's a bit of a salmon fry pattern. Um, it will be coming on Friday Night Flies, and by then we will have some jazzy name. Oh, there you go. Oh, quick there it feet. Is. Nicely done. <laughs> Definitely a fisherman. Awesome. Tell. Eagle eyes. Alright, so since we're going for cutthroats, we do have a nice sturdy hook here. This is happens to be an eagle claw, size four. Strong hook. We do uh, you know, cutties usually run in the two to three pound range, but uh, now and then, like last week, your first one that you got of the season was pretty hefty. And uh, salmon fry are pretty small, so this uh, at this time of the year, yeah, that keep that going. All right, so we got our hook, we have our bead. Um, as usual, if nobody's uh, been fly tying, we'll kind of cover all the bases, so if some of it seems Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we just kind of tie it for everybody. So the bead goes on with the small opening towards the eye of the hook. Yeah, I can just probably talk loud. That's pretty loud. <laughs> there, we'll go down here. Um, <laughs> get that out of here. So okay. we got our thread on, and we've uh, worked our thread up and down. Get a base on there so that our material doesn't slip when we're working with it. Um, I got a bit of a, this is just a saddle hackle that I'm going to be using for the tail. So we're going to work our thread back towards the back. And uh, there's usually two stopping points on flies. One of them is at the hook point, and the other one is back where the barb is, or the bend of the hook. You'll hear a lot of people referring to it as that. And that's where I'm going to tie this particular pattern in. And we'll just prep this feather. We want to get rid of all the down. We don't really need that. What we're looking for is the long fibers. If we're just going to put a neat little tail on this thing. We're going to stroke our fibers back so that we get the length of them all the same. I guess you guys can see it on the TV behind me. And we're just going to pinch all those tips together. Hold on tight and peel it off. And I'm going to do it one more time here, lining up my tips. Peel it off. That's going to give me, me, give me a nice little tail. To work with. I'm just going to get those those fibers all together. Let's see if it works out better. Yeah, there we go. And uh, we're going to do a length of the shank. So that's how you measure it off. See, we're going the full length. That's going to be my tail. I'm going to switch hands. Why we get so much feedback here? Hey, is there some? I don't know why we get so much feedback. 
brutal. I've muted the TV already. I don't know if it's, uh, it's not I don't know. Enough. I don't know. We're just getting a lot of feedback. A lot of yeah. feedback. It's probably all the metal in my face. And all around <laughs> you. So, uh, with this particular fly, hey, that's better. Um, we're going to be doing a dubbed body. So it's not too critical what your your base looks like on the hook shank itself. With some of the more intricate salmon flies where you're doing silver wraps, then it's really important that you have a nice clean thread wrap on there. What are we digging for? We're digging for my... So we're putting the, the ribbing on next here, which happens to be a copper wire. Don't use your good scissors. That'll be the end of them. Uh, to make sure that the weight on our fly is even, we're going to tie in this copper ribbing all the way up behind the bead. And either tie it on the top. This is a small fly. If it's a larger fly and a heavier gauge wire, I'm going to tie it on the bottom so that it helps keep my fly riding upright. On these smaller flies with the smaller gauge wire, it's not too important. But uh, keep it either on the top or the bottom, not side to side, because that will make your, your fly spin in the water. And next is our dubbing. So there's all kinds of dubbing on the market. This uh, one that I'm particularly using here is actually a blend. I took some diamond dub yeah. and some rabbit. rabbit. So rabbit doesn't have that nice flashy characteristic that Diamond Dub does, but I wanted to put a little sparkle in this fly. So we're going to get the dubbing onto the hook, and it's pretty simple. I got the ball of dubbing in my finger and thumb, and then as I'm going down the thread, I'm going to pull some of those fibers out of that bunch and twist them onto the thread. Very nice, Scott. Very nice. Alright, so we're going to build this body going forward here. And then this is where you're going to work on the, the taper of the fly, depending on how thick or thin you've dubbed the material on. You're uh, usually better off to go pretty sparse and build up the, the thickness by over wrapping than to try and dub on large amounts of dubbing. Because when you try to put on too much, all that it does is it, uh, it creates a hollow tube in the middle of the dubbing and it doesn't dub onto your thread. So going sparse with it helps to get those little fibers to grip the thread. Another trick that uh, the old timers do is they spin their bobbin, which winds up your thread and helps you to get um, a little bit more traction to the thread or more grip for you to dub onto. So as we're working towards the head here, I'm going to start making it a little bit thicker. Not too much though, you'll be surprised. A little difference in the thickness goes a long way on these smaller flies. So we'll just start bulking it up a little bit. And we're going to bring this right up to behind the bead. We're not going to pack it in tight behind the bead because we've still got a few more materials to go. There you go on the TV there, you can see there's a little bit of a, a taper going on. We're going to do our ribbing here to lock it in. Just nice, even wraps going up. We got six or seven wraps, end right behind that bead, trap it, and then you can either wiggle it off or get some nice fine point. Little magic Velcro. Oh, yeah, he's gonna. gonna tell people about that thing. So this here tool, pretty easy. Popsicle stick with um, Velcro. So you're using the the male side, which is the side with the plastic hooks, not the loops. Hotel pens work really well too. Yeah. There you go. That. Yeah, I've always liked yours. Yeah. Nice <laughs> round style. They're free. This is the flat style. Stand. So you just uh, bug this out a little bit. We don't want to make it too crazy. Um, but what that does is it adds a little bit of movement to the fly. It's also going to trap air in there. 
which will show up as little air bubbles. And all that represents life in the river. So this particular pattern can be drifted like a bug. It is pretty buggy. And, but when you swing and strip it, it uh, replicates the salmon fry pretty nicely on the early hatch here. Uh, next we're going to put in this nice collar, which is just a strong hackle or saddle in a brown. And this is where you want to be choosy. So because it's a small fly, I'm not going to grab a feather with really long fibers. If you bend it over, you'll see that those fibers will completely take over the whole fly. There we go, it's going well past the tail. So I want to find something with a little bit of a shorter shorter width to the feather. And we're also going to tie it near the tip. Well, not too long, too long. This cape's been uh, pilfered pretty good. I've been tying a lot of these this week, getting ready. Yeah, that'll work right there. Yes. So once you find your appropriate feather, you are going to get this thing on there. So I don't need any of the down in the back. We're just going to peel that away off the stem, get it out of my way. All right, so we want this feather to get tied on with the curvature of it. Everything has a natural curve. It's going to go down behind the fly. There we go, nice couple of tight turns. Get a couple in front of that stem. If you want to really secure it, you can fold it over and tie over top. That makes sure it really stays there and doesn't come out. And then we're going to do some wraps here. So this one's nice and long. I can just use them with my fingers. But before I do, I'm going to coax. Yeah, maybe we'll use it. We're going to coax these feathers back. So it's going to create what's called a palmered effect, which is all the material on one side of the leading edge. So let's see. So it should show up on the TV there. You see, here's the stem, and all the feathers are on one side. And then we're going to do a couple wraps. Now you can do you can do this in a varied style, so you can go pretty light, one or two turns, or you can go a little heavier. I tend to do patterns with a little bit of both. So I'll do three or four with a light hackle, three or four with a heavy. They all kind of react a little bit differently in the water. All right, so that's on there. You can see we've got the Maybe that'll show it better. There you go. You've got the palmered effect. The feathers going backwards. You can stroke them all back and give yourself a couple good turns. That's going to help trap those ones going backwards. And next is the, the little highlight here, which is our grizzly hackle. And we're going to pick some of these nice thin tops. They call it woolly bugger. No, the woolly bugger is the, uh, the thicker stuff. Yeah, so this is for your dry flies, really. It's a dry fly cape. And we're going to trim off two of the tips. I'm going to get them lined up tip to tip. So I got my two tips lined up there. I'm going to get my, my distance, so I want it to come into that tail section. So once I find out where that is, I'm going to pinch it off. Stroke these unnecessary fibers away and just peel them off nice and gently. We'll cut it a little shorter so we can get them in there. Now we're going to attach one of these on each side. Make sure that you got the correct side on the outside. So one side of the feather will be dull, the other side's a little brighter. Uh, we want that bright side going out. Touch the mouse. Touch the mouse, you got it. There's that length. Alright, so once you've got your feathers prepped, I'm just going to nip it right in on each side. And when I do the other side, you'll see what I've done. This is your one chance to make sure that the feathers are laying flat against the, uh, the fly, which can be the tricky part sometimes. They want to they wanna spin on you. Right, get it on there. Beauty.
Oops. Alright, so we'll get this one on this side here. Now I am going to have to spin my vise so I can see what I'm doing. There you go. So you can see the nice little highlight that that gives them. Pinch them down. Fold those tips back. A couple wraps in front. And then you can get rid of the tags. Now, that fly in that state can be done. So if you whip finish, I'm just going to do a half hitch in. Is your whip finish right here? Uh, no, it's on the table, but I'm not uh, I'm not done yet. Okay. So that can be a finished fly, but we're going to give it a little extra hot spot. So we're going to get rid of our black, and we're going to go to this UV orange tying thread. And I'm just going to go in on top of that black, right behind the bead. So that gives the, the fish a little target, a little something extra for that fly. And where did that finish go now? Maybe I didn't pull it out. Is that the water cup? Oh, let's see if we can use another man's whip finish. You got it? All right, so a couple whip finishes on there. Finish this off with a little bit of head cement and you are ready to fish this pattern. So you can see it is a little bit of a cross between a minnow pattern and a bug pattern. It's a hybrid. So it's uh, useful all year round, but it's specifically tied up for the cutthroat. There you go. Cool. That's good. Yeah. So if anybody has any questions, then uh, feel free to come up and take a quick look yeah, at it here. Come on have a look at the fly if you guys want to come and have a look. Come and then uh, Zach will be up with... Uh, what do you got there going? We do a little sculpin pattern. Sculpin pattern. Yeah. Should nice. be kind of fun. Another appropriate fly for our